take your white vinegar, get a measuring cup. We're going to pour one cup of white vinegar into a measuring cup. And then we're going to pour that into our little bottle. Just find an empty bottle, uh, like a soda bottle or something like that. Pour the vinegar into the bottle. And this is going to get a little messy, so you know, make sure you got a tablecloth or you're outside. Now we're going to get another measuring cup. And we're going to measure one third of a cup of baking soda. This is a really cool experiment. Okay, so pour your baking soda into your measuring cup. Now you're going to get the baking soda into the balloon, which we probably should have got a funnel, but we didn't think about that. So Miss Erica is going to help me pour the baking soda into our balloon. And as you can see, the baking soda is going everywhere. <laughs> but we did get it in the balloon. And you have to kind of push it and squish it down in there. Third of a cup of baking soda. Squish it all down in there. And what we're doing here is we're going to cause a reaction that's going to blow up this balloon when the baking soda mixes with the vinegar. Okay, so now you're going to take that balloon, you're going to stretch the top out and put it over the top of your bottle. Don't put the baking soda in yet, just hang it down. And now let the baking soda go into the bottle and mix with the vinegar. And looky there, the balloon is blowing up. That's because of a reaction between the baking soda and the vinegar. The baking soda is a base and the vinegar is an acid and it's combining and it's creating carbon dioxide which is blowing up your balloon. Pretty cool, huh? In this experiment we're going to be doing uh, another reaction. We're going to be using hydrogen peroxide. You're going to take a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide, use your measuring cup, and uh, use another bottle or rinse out the bottle you used for the baking soda. Pour the peroxide into the bottle. All right. Hydrogen peroxide is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. Now we're going to put some dish soap, just a few drops of dish soap into your hydrogen peroxide and just kind of twirl it around, let it mix up. Okay. Our next ingredient is yeast. Yeast is going to produce the reaction that we want. Uh, you're going to take a teaspoon of yeast and two tablespoons of warm water and you're going to mix that together, okay? Mix it up in a little measuring cup. The yeast is going to act as a catalyst and it is going to help release the oxygen molecules that is in the hydrogen peroxide, okay? So when we, when we mix it up and stir it up and pour it in there, and this yeast, it takes a little bit to pour it up, to um, mix it up. It's really gooey and it smells horrible. But we're going to stir it up. This takes just a minute, so give me give me a minute here. Uh, but this reaction, the when the catalyst releases the oxygen, it's going to make the oxygen bubbles bubble up, and you're going to see a really cool reaction coming out of the bottle. It's going to bubble over. We're going to stir it up really good. Sorry, folks, this took a little bit and it's really nasty and messy. But stir it up. You can see it's taking a few minutes here to 
get it all mixed together. Now we're gonna pour that into your bottle. There we go. Now watch the reaction. It comes bubbling over. All right, you see all that? You can also put, add some food coloring if you want to to make it look really cool. And if you fill the bottle, the bottle is really warm because it produces an exothermic reaction, which is it releases energy in heat. There you go. That is elephant toothpaste. In this experiment, we're gonna be creating something called oobleck, which is a Dr. Seuss term. Uh, it's really gonna be a kind of a slimy material. We're gonna be using cornstarch, which you can find in your kitchen. We use cornstarch when we're cooking to thicken things, uh, like gravy or something like that. So we're gonna take about a cup of cornstarch, and we're gonna add it to a, a bowl or a cup, and then you're gonna take about, about a cup of water, give or take, uh, you might need a little more, a little less. It just depends. We're going to add the water and you're going to stir, 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 stir. This is going to take a little while. Uh, the cornstarch is really dense. Uh, it's a very, very thick powder. And so it's going to take you a little while to stir all this up. Um, the reason uh, we're going to do this experiment is that we want to show you something called a non-Newtonian fluid. It's named after Sir Isaac Newton. Um, all matter, which is basically everything, is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Uh, the atoms that make up an object are always moving, and how fast they move determines whether an object is a solid, liquid, or gas. So if you have a solid material like ice, the atoms are packed tightly together and they move really slow. Uh, as the ice begins to melt, uh, the atoms are moving more quickly, and so that becomes a fluid. And then if the ice melts and starts to evaporate, that's turning into a gas, and that means that they're moving even faster, okay? So what we're making here can sometimes be a solid, and it can sometimes be a fluid and it's called a non-Newtonian fluid because it can change what it is. Uh, generally, something that is a non-Newtonian fluid is very thick and sticky. The atoms are moving enough to allow the material to pour like a liquid and change shape, but only if you do it really slowly. If you try to manipulate it too quickly, then it forms to a solid. So when we get this done, I want you to manipulate the stuff, put your fingers in it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. If you press down on it, it feels like it's solid, but then when you let go of it, it starts to drip like it's a liquid. Okay, we've almost got it stirred up really good here, and then we're gonna demonstrate it for you. Um, do you if you like to play with slime, you're gonna love this because it behaves sort of similar to slime. Here we go. So we're gonna get it out of the cup. It's solid. You, when you're squishing it out of your cup or your bowl, you can feel it, it's really solid. But then you hold it up and it's, it drips. You see how it's dripping off? It, is, it, it makes a really big mess. So make sure you're doing this with a tablecloth or you're outside. Uh, I just put the, I put the slime into the tray and you can feel it, it's really hard, but then when you pick it back up, it turns liquid again. And this is because the atoms are running into each other when you pick it up and you're, when you're squeezing it and picking it up, the atoms are running into each other and that slows them down and turns into a solid. When you let it go, they start dripping again like a liquid. It's a really, really cool, cool fluid.
The first soda we tried was 7-Up. Next, we tried an Orange Crush. Our third soda was a root beer. And finally, we used a Diet Coke. So which one do you think went higher? Eric and I thought that it was between the root beer and the diet soda. What do you think? So what causes this reaction? Well, soda is packed with carbon dioxide, which is bonded with the water. The gas contained in the bottle tries to escape when the bottle is opened. To make the bubbles escape, the carbon dioxide bond with the water must be broken and we use the Mentos to break that bond. A Mentos candy looks smooth, but under a microscope, you'll see lots of tiny bumps all over the surface. It is this bumpy surface that breaks the bond between the CO2 and the water and creates the carbon dioxide eruption. <laughs>